judgment in the appeal of Hamso LLP against Ogilvy Grant and others. Lord Reid will give the judgment to the court. This appeal from the Court of Session concerns circumstances in which one party to contractual negotiations may be liable in damages for a misrepresentation which induces the other party to enter into the contract. The facts of the case concern the lease of a grouse moor in the Scottish Highlands. Negotiations were carried on between the respondents, who are the owners of the moor, and Mr. Alistair Erskine, who was interested in taking a lease of the moor for the purpose of commercial shooting. In the course of the negotiations, the respondent's chief executive, Mr. Lewis, responded to concerns which Mr. Erskine had expressed about the number of birds on the moor by sending him an email containing information about that subject which was seriously misleading. The judge found that the information was given honestly but negligently, and that it induced Mr. Erskine to go ahead with taking a lease. Mr. Erskine decided to take the lease in the name of a limited liability partnership, Cramasso, uh, which was then established. Mr. Erskine uh, acted as Cramasso's agent in finalizing the arrangements with Mr. Lewis, who was aware that the lease was to be taken in Cramasso's name, and the lease was then signed. The judge concluded that although Cramasso had entered into the lease as the result of a negligent misrepresentation made by Mr. Lewis, it had no remedy against the respondents since they had not owed Cramasso any duty of care. That was thought to follow from the fact that Cramasso had not been established at the time when Mr. Lewis sent the misleading email. On appeal, the inner house reached the same conclusion for slightly different reasons. Since Mr. Lewis had had no reason to suppose when he sent the email that anyone other than Mr. Erskine would rely upon it, it was thought to follow that no duty of care could be owed to anyone other than Mr. Erskine. The Supreme Court unanimously allows Cramasso's appeal. The court's reasoning is set out in a judgment written by myself with which the other justices agree. Lord Toulson adds a concurring judgment. The court considers that the courts below were mistaken in viewing the representation as an event whose legal consequences were fixed at the time when the email was sent. A representation made in the course of contractual negotiations is capable of remaining in effect until the contract is concluded. Depending on the facts, that may be the case even where the final contracting parties are not the original representor and representee. In the present case, the parties simply continued with the ongoing negotiation and conclusion of the lease after it became apparent that Cramasso was to be used as a vehicle for Mr. Erskine's investment. Without either party drawing a line under their previous discussions or disclaiming what had previously been said. The only change was that Mr. Erskine was acting as an agent rather than as a principal. In these circumstances, it can be inferred that the negotiations continued on the basis that the representation contained in the email remained in effect and induced the conclusion of the contract. Since the risk of harm being suffered as a result of reliance upon the representation continued to be foreseeable, it follows that the respondents must be taken to have assumed responsibility for its accuracy towards Cramasso even though Cramasso was not the original representee, and accordingly owed Cramasso a duty of care. The court therefore concludes that Cramasso is entitled to recover damages in respect of any loss which it may have suffered. In that connection, the court considers the statutory provision governing the recovery of damages in Scotland where a person has been induced to enter into a contract by a negligent misrepresentation, and clarifies some issues which have been raised in previous cases in relation to the effect of that provision. The case will now return to the Court of Session in order for the appropriate remedies to be considered.